Welcome to the Nostalgia Test Podcast, the show where two longtime friends put their mainstream pop culture past to the ultimate test, the Nostalgia Test. Word up. Well, look perfect. Nothing to rearrange. Sometimes you just get a feeling like you need some kind of change. No matter what the odds are this time, are nothing's serious? gonna stand in my way. There's something in my heart. There's lost, whatever. I can't remember that part. The light in the end is my favorite part. Standing tall on the wings of my dreams, rise and fall. Dude, greatest theme song. The rain and thunder, the rain and <laughs> hail. Dude. <laughs> but I showed America this or bust. Dude, I showed this theme in one in my class, and we talk about how like racist it is basically, because like Larry, you know, the guy in the beginning, white pick offense, has a thousand brothers. I don't know who all those kids are. He's riding in, t- in a red Mustang, like he's like the quintessential american dream white guy right then you have this guy who literally is being filmed in echo park basically in 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 la and it's supposed to be some mediterranean island that he's coming out of it's so stereotypical he can't spell bust he spells burst balky Balky bartakamus and then the funny part is when he's coming into the united states and was he from greece he's supposed to be from some mediterranean island like greece or something like that so when he's coming over to the United States, he's on that ship. He, they show him on like a battleship coming into the to Ellis Island, but it was 1986. There, Ellis Island is not where the where immigration came through. So they literally created this false narrative. <laughs> the best is like the other guy's high fiving, <laughs> high fiving. Balky was like a sheep herder. Yeah, of course he was. A shepherd. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Who just hugs everybody. Yeah. Dude, the guy he high fived, wow. and then there's some dude standing with sunglasses. Like, who the fuck are you, bro? Yeah, what was that? What the fuck is that? He looked like his drug dealer. Like, some guy he buys weed from. <laughs> oh, my God, dude. The other what thing I show in this? school, the other thing I show is the opening to different strokes. And that is so just this, weird. So this is supposed to be like a odd couple show yeah that's an odd couple show yeah all right Great. oh god dude. all right guys we just jumped this right yeah, right we just away we're gonna the start shark, everybody going. like here we it are is. i mean like welcome to another episode of the nostalgia test podcast i'm dan dissinger here in la making a lot of noise over here um and i'm here with my co-host and longtime friend manny Ocuello there in new york manny how you doing tonight we are not <laughs> Perfect strangers. No, we are not. We might have been at one point, well, but yeah. holy shit, dude! That I'm doing great. Um, this is the uh, <laughs> yeah, but I'm no over here holding it. a fucking pen with a mic. But I'm like, I see that. That's really clever. That uh, looks really good. Yeah, it's all right. You know. Um. So, oh. anyways, guys, we are doing theme songs again, but yeah. this time. This time live act. I guess what do you go on these live action? Sitcom. Like live like action sitcoms. sitcoms. Yeah, sitcoms, sitcoms. Theme songs. Um, Let me ask you this, Dan. Yeah. <laughs> when was this on? Which one? When Perfect was Stranger? this on? What time? Oh. This was not a TGIF Friday. Yeah, it was. Sitcom. It was. Perfect Strangers was a TGIF sitcom. Okay, so I'm what, pretty I'll, sure. I'll tell you this. I have a lot of information. I'm um, sure you do, but let hold on. Before we go into this, now, yeah. <laughs> are we, we're still doing the judgment of just the song? Oh, wait, I just want to correct myself. Originally airing on Tuesdays for the short six episode first season in the spring of 1986, it moved to Wednesdays in prime time in the fall of 1986. It remained on Wednesdays until March 1988 when it moved to Fridays. The show found its niche there as the anchor for a- ABC's original TGIF Friday night lineup, though it aired on Saturdays for a short time in 1992. This show ran from 1986 
1993. It had 150 episodes, eight seasons. Eight seasons? <laughs> yes. Dude, if a fucking show goes three seasons, you've had a great hit. Right, exactly. Nowadays. 150 eight episodes. Eight seasons. I'll tell you the um, the the only episode I really remember about this, and I remember this show was just fucking crazy. Um, I mean, all shows back then were, yeah. in my opinion, crazy, and just I can't believe we watched some of the things we did. Yeah. Was when he was bowling and he like <laughs> he like throws it. <laughs> Look, people, if you haven't seen Perfect Strangers, it's on Hulu. Watch it. Yes. Is it stereotypical? Yes. Are there some issues about culture and race and everything? Absolutely. It's it was right? an odd couple, yeah. odd couple based kind of show. Yeah. You know, but it's and hilarious. it was in the eighties and nineties before political cricket. Well, it was a little bit of a political correctness yeah, or it, not. There was a lot of leeway, I feel like. I mean, this show, I mean, Balky is like unhinged and it's like oh if you're not from america you're a lunatic like he looked like a crazy like he would act like uh, crazy actually i mean i know that's even like not politically correct to say but like he there was no almost no other way to describe his behavior and it was just amazing i mean i i felt like th that was one of my favorite shows on tgif and i was an avid tgif watcher when i was a kid these are the kind of shows, like the openings of the shows that we're watching, is like from that. You ever see that YouTube video called "Too Many Cooks"? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, we'll put that. This in is the what show it's notes. based on. <laughs> yeah, that, everyone. This is these. kind of like what it is. Like all of everything that we we watched, I was like, "Holy shit!" This is what "Too Many Cooks" was like parody of. Even "Too Many Cooks" get into the cartoon. Yeah. Also, at the end of it, what's it mean? Yeah, but like when it goes way too long, but yeah, like what are we watching? Well, okay, so how are we this rating this? I feel like we could do that similar um, to the cartoon theme song episode and just rate the music. The problem is, yes, we have to. Yeah, Th there's so many visuals. Do you want to rate the video? Too. Like, I mean, we're gonna end up talking about it because there's I feel so like much going on. Well, here's the thing. Yeah, we have we have a show on here that its theme song is a literal song written by not just like I mean all these are written by people, but a song in like an American <laughs> standard like book. You know, I mean, so with that, yeah, I know what you like, mean. You know what I mean? I know what you mean. Yeah, but I I guess like I mean again we're rating on it. You know whether it passes the test now. I don't think. In my opinion, none of them are going to pass except one, because that was the one that's like an actual song. Because Dude, like, I don't know, because none be of them. You on this one? I mean, I would say that unless you're comparing it with the show, but like for the for all right, all right let's let's okay. do this. Let's one. get into this. Let's, okay, let's get to let's this get one. This. Okay, okay, yeah. rising tone. Like, you like this one? Dude, let me just explain one thing to you about the song the opening theme song to perfect strangers okay the you're all, explaining it to me yes okay he, first of all the guy who wrote this song uh is an american film and TV, television composer and singer best known for writing and performing the themes the tgif television shows such as perfect strangers full house family matters and step by step so lots of the stuff that we're about to talk about all written and basically performed, I think, at the same time. By this, this is his worst one. What? Yeah, I would disagree. That perfect. Good. Changes I'm is glad the worst you fucking disagree. But this is his worst one, dude. I, I would yeah, put right this off the song bat. up against like many Bon Jovi songs. Because what is wrong with you? Because the thing is, it this this doesn't make you feel like anything. I mean, to no. me, I'm just like. I get psyched when I hear this song. No, I think it's because you really like the show. I didn't really love this show. And uh -huh. I guess maybe that's why I'm just like, meh. Like, <laughs> no, this doesn't even make me feel nostalgic. Wow. You didn't like this song? Like no. The show either? I think, if, if, I guess the show was okay. Okay. I don't know. So First I of mean, all, the opening of the show visually it is why is he high-fiving everybody he's about to go chase his dreams 
What dreams? Where is he going? Chicago? He wants to be, yeah, he wants to be uh But, but yeah, Balky to... shows up in fucking Ellis Island. Because yeah, well, I mean, well, Balky is his long lost cousin. Their Excuse? family. They... So their family, oh. like like in a way where like married in family. Do you know what I mean? They're cousins, but okay. they're like very, very like distant in that way, but they're cousins. Okay, so What's the premise? Why is Balky in America? In America, to to chase his dreams of being in America. I don't know. To dude, why does anyone? What did anyone do anything? Okay, so are they in New York or they're, they're Chicago. in Chicago? They're in Chicago. Yeah, they're in Chicago. So Balky jumps on the Tom Cruise bus. Right. Yeah, he's right, right after, sitting right next after to Tom Cruise. Flanagan. Flanagan leaves. Dude, if, if cocktail opened and Balky <laughs> was on the bus with Flanagan in, in the opener, I would have... No, because Flanagan was going into New York. Balky was leaving. Oh, okay. Okay. He was leaving. Yeah, because actually... Yeah, because he, he came into Ellis Island on that battleship and then yeah. he gets on a bus and goes to Chicago. Like, they even put... Well, that's hilarious that they even put that in there. Like, for you why to, that's there. Like, within... In uh, two minutes, you get the premise of a show. Like... And nothing's yeah. going to stop them now. Yeah. Dude, this is why I love this this song. Like, you know, the, the actual, that part of it makes me, like, I don't know. It just, there's something about this. Remember? Okay. Do you, do you remember the movie Running Man? With sure. All sorts? Okay. There's a song in the Running Man at the end of the, the ending credit song. It's like this song. It doesn't belong in the Running Man at all. But it's just one of those songs that, like, is, like, one of those weird 80s, like, themes. And for me, like Perfect Strangers, like when I hear the the chorus of like standing tall on the wings of my dream, rise and fall on the wings of my dream. And then it's like the rain and thunder, the wind and haze, I'm bound for better days. It's my life and my dream. Nothing's going to stop me now. I, I, how can you not feel anything from that? Um, <laughs> I mean, I'm not saying the lyric was bad. I just didn't like the way it was performed and the way it was used. I don't know. I don't like it. I don't know. I'm going to stick to it. It's not even nostalgic to me. Wow. Maybe because I just didn't really like the show. Not even nostalgic. Like No. Uh, you I'm just like it because it's like poetry to you. I'm saying it's still good. Okay, it's good. It's still good. Dan, still good. You're still saying good. it passes the fucking test? Of course it does. This is still good. This is still good. I this hear comes this on. I'm like, this well, comes on yeah, on the show. Do Nobody, they don't even have shows. Shows don't even have jingles anymore. Okay, I, I that's Hard, one They part. hardly have openings now. That's what I want to talk about too. It's like, I miss this. Do you know what I mean? Like, I miss having, I mean, I'm listening to it right now and I'm just like, what the odds <laughs> are this time? Nothing's going to stand in my way. It might as well I have been that. written by Journey. So, And what's wrong with that? If Journey there's covers nothing this wrong song... With it. You're telling me you wouldn't enjoy it. No, I would have, but Journey would have done a better job. So <laughs> let me just let me just say this. There are some people that would argue that there are opening songs or themes. Like yeah. So so like I like get Games of Thrones. Uh, uh Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones. Everybody likes I guess everybody would know that one. Westworld. You know the opening. I mean, I don't know it. I do if you watch the show. But like at some point, sometimes I'm like, you know, they have this skip option now. Yes. I skip the fucking opening. Who's <laughs> who's listening or watching them? Why? Because they're not good anymore. Now, I will agree with you that in the, our time, I believe that the jingles and the openings were on point. Yes. So like, I'll give you that. But I just didn't like this guy. Oh, Manny. I, I know. A part of me feels bad for you. Well, <laughs> a part of me feels bad for you that you're hanging on to this. And you would say I that this it. is one of the top ones. I, 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 I don't know if it's a top one, but I will say that, like, I think it's still good. I think it passes well, well, we're the gonna, test. We're going to re rewind later on and compare. Rewind but. all you want, dude. I've been listening to these for the last few days. I mean, there is a song on this list that has oh, been sorry for you. in my head, digging a hole in my brain. That's that why I I'm saying, like, about. out of all of them, yeah. this is still exciting to you. Yes. 
I don't know. I don't know what you're hearing. Maybe I need to smoke some of that fucking CBD you use. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you should have bought it. All right. Uh, so, dude, I don't know. That's what I mean. It was also, yes, a favorite show of mine, but still, I just, I'm trying to like detach myself from the show because there are things on here where I didn't watch the show as much, but I love the song. But I don't know. I love the music. It always made me happy and it makes me happy now hearing it. I, I would love to learn this and be able to play it. I would I would want to play this song. <laughs> You're just oh, dead. I cannot wait even... to cut clips from this to put on online. <laughs> Your face, you are distressed. Like you're just like, what are you fucking talking about? The uh, quote Dan. I'm just kidding. Dan's believe. review on cocktail. This God. movie is trash. <laughs> I'm gonna say. This theme song is trash. But I also said cocktail was nostalgic. So I didn't. Uh... Okay, I might go back and change my mind after we go through this, but it didn't <laughs> do anything to me. I listened to it like five times today and it was like. You don't have to go okay. back. All right. I'm just no. surprised. Well, good. Be surprised. There's yeah. going to be a couple of them that you're yeah. going to be surprised. Yeah. Fuck Next Steve. one. <laughs> Next one. <laughs> Steve, you Next like one. that one? Yeah, Arguments. You like that one, Steve? Yeah. Steve doesn't like when we get along. Yeah, check All out right. Steve Herrera's uh, on Bandcamp. Okay, so <laughs> 13 other people. So uh, our next one is Family Matters. Now, oh. written by the same fucking guy, dude. I mean, guy, yeah, but the, it, the, dude, the opening gets you right away. Yeah, I'm not. The good news on the newspaper. Love the wear condition this day and age. There wasn't any good news on a newspaper page. I fucking love this song. Inside this gentle heart, is all I see. Inside these gentle walls. A real love person I'd ever have seen. I mean, look. This song is go by amazing. They're in Chicago too. They're in Chicago too. Because this was a spin-off of Perfect Strangers. No, it wasn't. Yes, it was. So let's give Perfect Strangers its props for you know being on on the on air for so long to be there to kind of inspire probably one of the greatest shows to ever you know, grace our televisions. You know what I mean? Like Dude, this show was fucking great. Yeah. But it was a spinoff of perfect strangers because Harriet worked at the newspaper company, the, the newspaper. Oh man. I, I don't even stand. Know no, not stand. <laughs> <laughs> Larry was a photojournalist. So he worked at a newspaper. Oh, Harriet shit. worked in the building and she was an elevator operator. Yes. For like see the first season, then she lost that job and then got a new job as security or something uh there. Uh we were trying to do a Family Matters episode, but we uh <laughs> we have to start I think we get it. We're gonna together. go back into that. Yeah. Because I wanna definitely test I freaking love this show and yes. love, love, oh. love, love the jingle. Look, and I'm great. The 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 beginning does it right away. Oh, but do 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 this day and age to read any good news on the newspaper page. Oh. Yes. Yes. But this guy sang these songs so well. It was just like the craziest thing. But but see, this this brings us back to that conversation. When you're sitting there going like there, the, there are no good theme songs or you know, people think there are theme songs or they would say that this is a good theme song or whatever. I, I don't, I don't, I don't agree because like these are theme songs. You know what I mean? They give you the kind of feeling that the show's about to start. And also not just the show's about to start, it, it sets up the tone for everything. And I think like for me, I, I'm so nostalgic of like, television on Fridays and Friday nights and, and just television together where like you go and you watch TV with the, with people or you watch TV that's on that night. So like these songs are important because it kind of signals that the, that the show's coming on, 
but it just like sets up the tone. I, I, I love this. I love the idea of an opening theme song with words because I want to sing it. Like I want to sing these songs. Oh, this is, this is great. Yeah. Fucking I mean, great. Family Matters itself. I mean, without even going too deeply into how amazing Family Matters was as a show, but Family Matters was on for nine seasons and that had 215 episodes. I, I can't, I mean, a lot of shit happens. The uh, family matters. Now, theme, the yeah. theme song stays the same, but man, the people that are in it, yeah, change. <laughs> There's a lot of changing. But I actually, what's interesting is the opening theme for the first five episodes was "What a Wonderful World" by uh, Louis Armstrong. But you don't get that. I think like that happened, and then it stopped after the first five episodes, and then as days go by, by Jesse Frederick is this was the theme song. I would actually like to talk to Jesse Frederick and see how he like, did he watch a couple of shows and then like come and like became inspired? You know, I want to talk to Jesse Frederick. If you're out there, Jesse Frederick, uh, and you hear this, is he alive? We have to make sure. I don't know, but sorry, Jesse, for making fun of perfect strangers, but you know, I'm allowed to have my own opinion. Still alive. I would love to talk to him because I want to know how he came up with these things for these shows because that he really, really understood what it meant to kind of get an audience ready to watch a show. Do you know what I mean? Like, and I think that's the thing. When I hear his work, I, oh my God, it's so funny. Every time you start it, I hear it like, I'm, <laughs> I mean, think of it. He did The Family Man or whatever that is, Going Places, Perfect Strangers. Uh, Full House, Step by Step, Family Matters, Fuller House, which I don't know if you've ever seen Fuller House yet. Which is So like one episode. I think he, he was a composer also for Hanging with Mr. Cooper, uh, which that show we need to talk about. But another amazing TGIF show. But I, I, he, these, show, these, these songs just got you ready to watch television. You know what, the, too? It's funny because it seemed like the show was current. Mm-hmm. Right. But yet the song is setting you up to like, say, like when it's like it's a rare condition this day and age to read yeah. any good news in a new th- newspaper page. So it was like showing you the brighter side of life in a way mm-hmm. like, oh, how how great family could be. And it did that with Full House too. the lyrics in Full yeah. House. There was always like like, hey, life can be shitty, but this is, you know, this this show is going to show you how great it could be too. Even though there was some heavy, heavy topics oh, in these oh, shows. Yeah. Oh, oh, heavy topics. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This was supposed to be entertaining, and there was some life lessons. I mean, nothing like how deep shows get now. Like you watch This Is Us, and you're like, "What the? The show's like insane." But like this was like, even though it was a comedy, and you, I guess you would call them comedies. There was some drama. Especially like Eddie gets, you know, oh, freaking Dude. little girl disappears. She goes upstairs, yeah. never comes back. I oh mean, my God, I know. We can go on forever. With this. Did you know that one of the lyrics to this song is so in the chorus, it's like, as days go by, we're going to fill our house with happiness. And then the moon may cry we're gonna smother the blues with tenderness like i didn't know it was the moon may cry i thought it was as days go by again <laughs> telling you this guy got deep dude guy got jesse deep. frederick you know really jesse kinda... reach out to us come on we gotta yeah. talk we gotta, we gotta talk, talk. You know, jesse frederick we're also gonna call out a few other people from some shows that i would love to talk to <laughs> so, like, that actually may come on that would be amazing um all right so but Family matters. I mean, oh, not this to the dark on even the show, but like one of my favorite shows, Carl Winslow, probably one of the greatest television dads of all time as well. Fucking love this show. Freaking Passing. love him. Uh, he's hilarious. And he was one of the funniest people. He was so funny. Harriet. Everyone on that show was amazing. The show was great. Even the little sister was great, even though she only lasted a couple episodes. Yeah. Or a season. Or a couple seasons. I forget yeah. what season she's. She uh, went upstairs. She got in trouble. Yeah. Never came yeah, back. Yeah. No explanation. Yeah. You know why? Because Urkel shows up. Oh, Urkel. Need to open up for that budget. Open that. Anyways. Budge. Open that budge. They needed that budget for him. 
Yeah. He was supposed to be temporary. Guy yeah, comes but he in, took steals over. the show. Okay. Steals the show. Anyways, Ooh, we, got we can get to that when we do matters. the uh, Family Matters episode. <laughs> I feel like All when right. we do Family Matters, we're going to lose our minds. But also, if we did a Fresh Prince episode, I would be like, I still cry when I see that episode of Fresh Prince when Will gets left behind by his dad again and he has that statue and then he screams and I was just like, oh, I, oh I saw, it, the other, I saw it like a month ago and I cried. <laughs> anyway, that was I didn't a tough cry one. But I've cried, yeah, amazing. <laughs> I, I haven't cried. I cried last night. All right. Uh, all right, step by all step, right. which, is, which is not Moving normal. Moving on, step, step by normal. step. <laughs> step <laughs> by step. <sighs> this show. Here we go. Here we go. But And I so, sent you the one with Cousin is, Cody in it because he was my favorite character. Fucking love Cousin Cody. Yeah. He lives in so, a van in the driveway. So it opens up that they're like, Going on a roller coaster, and here it goes. Yeah, here we go. Again, yeah. again, another great song by Jesse Frederick. But <laughs> everything I don't know sounds how so similar, though. You know what I mean? I no, feel like is. he phoned this one in a little bit. We'll ever second time around. But it was a duet so, as well. Was this spinoff? Um, I have to look, but this was a duet which is, I think, also different for him uh, because, you know, usually he just sings the songs himself. I'm looking at the lyrics right now. Wow. This one's long. This one had some, like, actually a lot more lyrics than usual. Oh, here we go. Step by step. Brand new start. Kind of way. People we don't we We'll get the same time around. So this is kind of like starting over. Were they like yeah. two new families? Is that what was the story? So okay, it was so kind of like the, the Brady premise, bunch. Yeah, exactly. The premise of Step by Step is like you had two people, Patrick Duffy and Suzanne Summers, who were st- uh, single parents with three kids each, and then they meet each other and they become like this huge blended family. But it's funny because they spontaneously get married during a Jamaican vacation after developing a budding relationship while Frank is Carol's client, resulting in their, be- their becoming the heads of a large blended family. Oh. Hence why Adam Sandler came out with the, the movie Blended. Oh, and they go to Africa. Don't ever want to see that movie. It sounds terrifying. <laughs> it sounds horrible. And yeah. So they, Brady Bunch. They, I don't think it's a spinoff. I think it's its own thing. And this show, too, 160 episodes. I just feel like these shows on TGIF just had long, long runs. You know? A lot of things to talk about. They had, th- they had six kids to deal with. One episode could have been with one kid uh, doing something wrong. There's so, there was so much content. It's just so much going on. And, I feel, and the other thing is funny is Bronson Pinchow from perfect strangers uh he actually in season six was uh a character he he became a male beautician who serves as carol's business partner um so he also appears on that show not as balky but as the guy who plays balky yeah yeah everyone on this show the patrick duffy suzanne summers and i believe stacy keenan was one of she was one of the most famous people on the show she was from my two dads and i feel like the blonde the the eldest blonde yes. daughter she was like one of those quintessential 90s actresses she was in everything from the late 80s and 90s like anytime you put a show on or some sort of tv movie or something she was on a lot of stuff um so she was in that show but the song is okay i don't i'm not like blown away by this one as I am by Family Matters uh, theme song, as days go by, and the Perfect Strangers theme song. This one's just like. <laughs> like it was so weird. And the context that, and the weird thing about the show is that doesn't Cody fall in love with the Stace, with Stacey Keenan's character in the show? Of course, they had to do that. that. Yeah. There's weird cousins falling in love shit. They're like. Were they cousins or were they like distant something or another? But they, he wasn't on that side of the family. He was like Patrick Duffy's nephew or some sort of weird like cousin. Yeah, but he lived there all the time. So, dude, yeah, 
I mean, Stacy did that. I will not. This is just nostalgic. Yeah. This, the, the song's not that great. He, yeah, he's Frank's nephew who lives in the driveway. Yeah. It's so weird that he lived in a so van like in the driveway charge. the whole time. Oh my God. That show. Uh, um, the show is ridiculous, but. Think about the, the theme song. Charles in charge of our days and our nights. Yeah, it's creepy. I want Charles in charge of me. No, you don't. No, you, you don't. don't want Charles you don't in want charge Scott of me. Bale in charge of anything. But like, yeah, especially not that. We, we don't have to go there with that show. <laughs> <laughs> that's that. That's a whole year episode just kind of like going through what happened on that show. Because that guy, Buddy, I felt bad. Oh, my him. God. That guy, Buddy. Oh, man. R.I.P. No, wait, he's not oh. dead, right? Oh. It was dead. He was a... <laughs> yeah, so uh, I'm going to say it's going to move us along here. It's just nostalgic. Yeah. It does not pass the test. No, it doesn't pass the test. It's not exciting, but it's not bad. It's not no. a bad song. It kind of opened like, up like it was like one of the first shows on a TGIF. And like you're like, yeah. okay, it's great. And yeah, like... I feel like, yeah, I feel like they that step by step was lucky to be on TGIF probably between two hugely powerful shows, whether it was the, I forget if it was on after family matters and before something else or whatever, but like that show wasn't as good. I feel like as the other shows, no, but you got to But they had two big names at the time. Yeah. 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 Patrick Duffy and Suzanne Summers who were yeah. the horniest parents of all time. I mean, you guys already have six fucking kids at the end of every episode. These two were like, always like running upstairs to you know to you know get it on well it's like do you really want to have another child I'm she had gonna... really good thighs <laughs> 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 oh people people moving us over moving us along to growing pains now i gave you the season two time. one because it, it, it's the duet one which i think is the best, best one yeah. As long, as long as we, we got, got each other, we got the world in our hands, baby. All night, all right. This... We got... I mean. <sighs> I sing this like it's weird. Like I have a problem. I'll be walking around my apartment and all of a sudden just be like, <laughs> people sharing like, the laughter. Yeah, it's like show me that smile again. Like I'll just like burst out into this song because it's just like I don't know. It's just got that like that feeling that like I want from an opening theme song. I feel like, but just a little bit about Growing Pains. American Television sitcom created by Neil. Marlins that aired on ABC from September 24th to 1985 to April 25th, 1992. The show ran for seven seasons and consisting of 166 episodes. So, wow. Now, Manny, what do you, what do you think of this? Like when you hear it, when you heard this song, you know, oh, and they're all from Long Island. This is all, the whole show takes, takes um, place in uh, Huntington. Really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It does. It takes place in Huntington, Long Island. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? I I like vaguely remember this show. I remember liking this show. I don't remember much about it. I I think the song's okay. Yeah. It doesn't have the energy that I like of the about the other two that we really liked. So but it's not bad. Yeah. I think I, it's I think it just stays nostalgic. It's like, it's not great. I would I say mean, like, I I don't know. Like I, <laughs> I I'm they must be. I must have passing all these fucking tests, dude. Dude, you, I, well, no, well, I didn't just, pass. Like, step listen by to step. like show show <laughs> themes, dude. I, my, you like most of you my like you'd be perfect in, in like the demolition man, where like <laughs> you know like. The hits yeah, were yeah, all yeah. just like uh, uh, commercial commercial songs. Yeah, but the thing is, I spent most of my like I I didn't have cable, so because I didn't have cable when I was a kid, and I don't have cable now, and I never had cable ever. Um, these Who the were the fuck shows, has cable now? Well, of course. Well, some people do. Man. I'm just saying, like most people have subscriptions. 
<laughs> sure, whatever. It's another <laughs> subscription. Cable was a subscription. Yeah. Dick. I no, <laughs> but I, these are the shows I watched. You know, so like to me, you know, I didn't have movie channels and whatever. So if I was going to watch TV, I was watching Growing Pains or, you know, Perfect Strangers or Family Matters. So Growing Pains, you know, I, I, I really like that show. I used to watch it all the time when it was on. Um, when Le- Leonardo DiCaprio uh, was on the show. I was oh, there shit, he that. was. Yeah, yeah dude, the show remember? was good. This one out of all of them was like the other one. It was kind of like Family Matters. It was like there was a lot of lessons and dark times. Yes. And then I think a lot of the fucking actors in it had dark times. Yeah. I think I got to watch some of these episodes. Now that you said it was, it was based in Huntington. Yeah, it was based in Huntington, Cal- uh, Huntington, California. Huntington, Long Island. Wow. Yeah, which is weird. Uh, they say the words hang is. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I uh yeah I I'm I it's so weird. I think a lot of these songs have a like um, I have a soft spot for a lot of this. It seems that way. Just, and I don't yeah, I, you're really biased like you're like the guy who like <laughs> loves IPAs and just goes and drinks IPAs and dude, you know rates high on IPAs. I was I was talking about IPAs the other day and I was like I don't know if I like them anymore. I think depends I'm a, on the IPA that you're talking about. Yeah, I think I'm a porter uh you know stout person now and you know Lo- nail, love false like ceiling lager. love love all that and if i am going to drink an ipa i drink a true ipa not some fucking new england ipa <laughs> we're putting it out there new england your ipas are trash no <laughs> the hazy ipas i'm just not into i i know a lot of people like them and i'm not yeah i think it i think there's really good ones out there i think yeah. it's a challenging beer to make uh, I just like, yeah. I like bitter IPAs. Um, I think I, can but I am that. more of a ale. I am more of an ale. Yeah. You know, if I'm, if I'm going to choose and my go-to is an ale. So yeah, I can't, I can't drink. I can't drink IPAs like I used to, but I'm sorry. I'm, All right. I, I'm Let's going get back onto growing pains. Like growing pains for me passes. <laughs> I don't care what anyone says. I'm owning my shit. I'm just gonna say it's nostalgic. I'm not saying it passes the fire test. All right, tests. go ahead. Excellent. All right. I hope you like this, Steve. <laughs> uh, Ladies and gentlemen, Steve likes chaos and anger yeah. and arguments. Yeah. All right. So here we go. This, this is guy likes a thumbs one. down. Thumbs yeah. down. This guy. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All this right. one. This is, the is this even a theme song? Dude, I'm watching it right now. I'm putting it on, and here we go. We're watching the theme to Marry with Children, which is obviously Love and Marriage, sung by Frank Sinatra. So we don't have so, to do much research. But so I will say this. Dude, this show is fucking crazy. This show is phenomenal. And like, when did this air? Was this on the Thursdays? When was this? Oh, this show, I, that's the thing about Married with Children. I don't think I ever knew when it aired. Um I don't even know if I was allowed to watch it when I was a kid. No, <laughs> this no this idea. is like this is like one. This must have been on late at night because this is like watching a live version of The Simpsons. The show follow. Okay, where does it say? It doesn't really tell me when it aired, but it was on um, Fox. So it was for Fox. Originally broadcasted April fifth, nineteen eighty seven. To June 9th, 1997. It is the longest lasting live action sitcom on Fox and the first to be broadcast in a network's primetime slot. In addition to the show's original run, one episode that was not screened on Fox when originally filmed on January 6, 1989, was aired on FX on June 18th, 2002, five years after the series' conclusion. So it was 11 seasons. It was on for 259 episodes. 11 seasons? Yeah, 259 episodes. And I don't know when it was on. Oh, here we are. So from 1986 to 1987, it was on Sundays at 8 p.m. Yeah. I mean, it makes sense because yeah, you had to be a lot older and your parents had to be okay with you watching this because it's a dysfunctional show. Yeah. And it was real. It yeah. was kind of like, was it before or after Roseanne? Because it's kind of like Roseanne. 
This like was that I think, kind of while Roseanne was on, I think. Possibly. Let me check. Maybe that it was show, like going against it. That show, Roseanne's a weird show because I don't even want to talk about it from like much, but like it was just like I didn't know know if it was funny or not. It was just ridiculous. I mean, it was apparently really, really good. People yeah. loved it. So but it like, was on around the same time. Roseanne aired from 1988 to 1997. That was on so, for fucking 231 episodes for 10 seasons. So, dude, fa- first of all, the song is is the Frank Sinatra song. Yeah. But but when you, I'll say, obviously the song passes the test, but I'll say when I do hear this song, I think of the opening of this show. Uh, without a doubt. You know, and I also think about the man who shall not be named because he bases his life on this show. I was literally thinking this because <laughs> this human being said to me verbatim, this is how I learned about American culture. And I was like, his parents let him watch married with children. And he learned about American culture Yeah, from this show. Yeah. Explains so much, Dan. It yeah. explains so much. Th- this show also spawned yeah. another show that I don't know if you watched called Unhappily Ever After with the drunk that used to go in the basement and talk to a puppet, that rabbit puppet, Nikki Collins yes. on it. Dude, that show was that out of show hand. was crazy. And yeah. why did any okay? What was that? That was called Unhappily Ever After. I believe it was did Unhappily the, Ever After. Yeah, I'll have to did, look it up again. Was it ever found out whether or not he was just talking to himself or like, did anybody else hear the puppet? The yeah. I I'm looking it up right now. First of all, that show was only on for five seasons. It's only on for a hundred, a hundred episodes. Makes um, sense. So Jack, a family man with schizophrenia, whose only friend is a talking toy rabbit became the central character along with the with, along with the rabbit, Mr. Floppy. Yeah, once Jack started making money, he no longer needed Floppy and his schizophrenia was cured and Floppy returned to being just a stuffed animal. Jack soon went insane from drinking again and brought Floppy back from the dead. Okay, so this is a really dark show. Dark show. So I always remembered, like, you you were always wondering whether or not Floppy was seen, like, uh-huh. by anybody else. But, like, I didn't realize, like, did they say he was schizophrenic in the beginning? Or, like, you I just kind of didn't know and like the whole show was like I what guess, the hell's going on i guess you just assumed but like that show was dark that that show also was hit the road jack don't you come That's back no right. more, no more yes. no more. hit the road jack don't yeah. you come back no more but i feel like you're right the married with children theme song you know love and marriage by you know song by frank sinatra the only time i ever hear that is if that show is gonna be on and when i if i ever hear that frank sinatra song outside of the context of that show the only thing i'm thinking about is married with children yes and so like i feel like as an as a theme it works perfectly and i will agree that it passes the nostalgia test fuck yeah the show is good too the show is great, much better actually. than unhappily ever after well, unhappily after unhappily ever after is a fucking disaster and that show i mean i i don't know why they tried to they tried to duplicate married with children but they really went too far with it you know because you don't have the amazingness of those neighbors i mean the two neighbors they're amazing those neighbors but when they changed out that one guy which was funny like the male like you know yeah but the show was great. Peggy, you know, uh, Katie Seagal is amazing. Everyone on She's the show an amazing was actress. Awesome. She was awesome in Sons of Anarchy. Oh. She fucking kicked ass in that. Oh, dude. What a fucking we, we great... Should do, we should do uh, an episode on... Or, like, maybe, like, several episodes on The Shield. Um, oh, The Shield. What a fucked up show. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Oh, my God. So it passes the test. Married with children. And here we are. To me, this is where it all starts. This competes. Full see, House. This can, Full House competes against Family Matters, in my, in my opinion, about like the joy that I get when I hear the song. Well, it has a very similar opening. Oh, of course. They're all the same. No, but it literally has almost the same opening. I used to mix them. Yeah. It just goes... 
Yeah, he, Jesse Frederick loves that opening. He loves that, that beat. Whatever happened to the Super D? Predictability, the milkman, the paper boy, evening TV. So this goes back to that theme. Like it's he's almost like, like the same thing. Well, he talks about the paper boy. And yeah. be- before that, it's he like loves newspapers and loves it. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, but I'm watching this and I'm looking at the show too, right? And I can't, I can't divorce Bob Saget and like John Stamos and like Dave Coulier and how they all knew how big of a joke this was like kind of not a joke in meaning that this show was stupid but like especially Bob Saget being the type of comedian he is it's crazy that he was on the show and then how popular he got because I used to watch um, America's America's Funniest Funniest Home Videos videos. constantly and now when I look back at it as you know older you could see how much he's just like I'm doing this and it's hilarious and like it's just such a joke I don't care you know dude it was a paycheck to him it was a paycheck he 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 was like fuck it yeah his jokes were hilarious everything he did on that was so funny but the show the, the music is awesome I think though for me Family Matters is a better song I like. I agree. Song is way better. I think I agree. Better, yeah. I like the beginning of this song. Yeah, it gets kind of long. It does. But so is Family Matters. But I'm not okay. I'm not mad at it. No, I'm not mad at it. Like I feel like the ability, the milkman, the the baby boy, even in TV. I mean. It's a great song, but Family Matters is way better. And it's not. It's the same fucking song, Dan. It's a continuation. It's basically he, he, he basically wrote one song it. and he was like, "Yeah, just change these couple words." It might have been the second verse to that song. Yeah, he revised it. I think he revised that song when he was like, "All right, I got to do Family Matters. All right, we gotta we gotta put some energy into this." The 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 the. the <laughs> the opening of Full House went like right out the gate and then it kind of lost because you know what's funny? We're watching the full versions of these things. Yeah. When you really Oof. watch the show, it, it cuts down it's like 30 the Full seconds. House one. It's like, oh, everywhere you look. Like, yeah, you, you don't get the whole part. like middle part where they're walking through the park and like yeah, doing you, some random shit. But I felt like it was important to hear the whole theme because like when you see the pilots, that's what you get. You know what I mean? Yeah. You watch the pilot episode of Family Matters, you're getting the whole song. You know what yeah. I mean? You're watching the pilot episode of Perfect Strangers, you're getting the whole song. Once everything is dealt with later on, you get a truncated version. But that's not fair, I think, because like Full House, when you cut out the middle of that, that whole thing, it's, you know, it is a much better song. But I, I think as a full song, it's just, you know. Does it pass the test though? Oh, man. You know, I, I feel really... I, I feel bad saying this, but I say it's just nostalgic for me. I feel like the Full House theme for me is just nostalgic. <laughs> this is a thinker because, because it's just like, I'm listening to it right now. Yeah. Like, I don't know this part. Oh, this one, I know. Yeah. Jesse Frederick really, I mean, I, I'm so blown away, though, still. Even when I say, like, oh, this doesn't pass the test or this is just nostalgic or whatever – it, it, truthfully, it doesn't even matter because these were actually really good songs. And I feel like I would like to watch Full House now. I actually wouldn't mind watching Fuller House. I've actually seen a few episodes. It's really ridiculously hilarious. And it's like, ridiculous. What, dude, when uh, John Stamos comes on the episodes, he literally is just like, I'm doing this. Isn't this crazy, guys? Like He literally, he might as well just look right at the camera and go, can you believe this shit? Yeah, because he produces it or something like that. <sighs> All right, so I'm going to say it doesn't pass the test. Uh, so it remains nostalgic. Okay. Just remains nostalgic. Dude, do you remember that episode of um, Full House when uh, Uncle Jesse was going to ride his motorcycle on the top of that building or something like that or across or jump across a building or something? Do you remember that? No. He was trying to still be a badass? No? No. Do you remember the song he, he sang with the rippers all the Forever? time? Forever? Oh. With, I know that he was like the whole big thing with like the Beach Boys. Yeah, he's in the band. I know. Isn't that weird? 
It is. <laughs> Dude, John Stamos has one of the most amazing careers. Like, I want to do a whole episode on, like, does John Stamos pass the nostalgia test? Because I just like... <laughs> he was in Entourage for a couple episodes. He was, he was in ER. Around. He was on yeah. ER. He did his own thing. He, had, like, he had his own thing, Grandpa or something like that. Yeah, that's, cool. that's right. Like, Grandpa. Dude, you, you look like you sleep in yogurt. Like, <laughs> like with... <laughs> Yogurt, <laughs> Greek yogurt. He was from Greece too, right? Yeah, he's Greek. Yeah, yeah remember his like his when they went. Remember when they went to Greece? Uh, yes. to the Full House and Je- and uh, what's the the girl's name? Um, what was Rebecca? Candace, Cam- Candace Cameron's um, one of the daughters. Stephanie oh, and, what the um, fuck was her name? <sighs> CJ. DJ. DJ. CJ. <laughs> So DJ walked around the hat or walked around a chair or did some sort of circle walk with oh, she got uh, married or something. around something with um with the kid and she got married. I was just yeah. like, it's the craziest thing. Like they did all these like uh, these weird things and a house must have been huge because they had a at some point they had Becky Aunt Becky and Jesse upstairs with their kids. In the attic. Like, yeah, in the attic, like like a, a full on twelve foot fifteen yeah. foot like loft. Yeah, and then they have everyone else in the rest of the house, and then they have the basement where Joey is staying. Plus, there's a recording studio down there. Oh, it's, it was crazy. What the? Fuck that house was, was a mansion. <laughs> it was in a mansion. It's out of van. Oh yeah. Anyway, uh, I mean, unbelievable. Okay, so it doesn't pass the nostalgia test, but holds a special place in my heart. I mean, truly. I mean, the whole show. <laughs> Yes, dude. All right. I think we're Next coming one. to this like really interesting trio of dude. Songs would you now. what what happens is now everything <laughs> changes. First of all, it's a different era. Totally. And you're talking about different types of shows. Yes. Like the shows that we just did were kind of family shows. TGIF. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna fucking hang out with the family. Get your popcorn. We're watching all these shows. Call up Flanagan. Call Flanagan up. All right. Now you you're going to just straight up teen shows. Yeah. This is the nineties. Yes. We're opening up with a whole other type of theme. Saturday morning. Saturday. Um, and you didn't choose no Fresh one. Prince of Bel Air, but I will say honorable mention. First one, here we go. Oh, Save by the bell. Now, First of all, before I even <laughs> before I even press play, you already know the bell. Oh, yeah. When I wake up in the morning and I think I'm going to make it on time. By the time I get my books and, books I, get my and I get myself a look, I'm at the corner just as time, time to, to see the, the bus, bus fly, fly by. by. It's all right. Because right. I'm saved by the bell. The guy who wrote this was this music teacher. I have this whole story about him. And his theme song would book him the gig and he'd go on to compose the music for all the shows four seasons right so this guy actually wrote the song to save by the bell and then that got him to write the music for all the seasons of the uh save by the bell which i don't know how many songs there were for save by the bell or how much music you need because it changes um, i guess yeah scott bye, gale bye, bye. so scott it's gale wrote the theme song right. he also wrote the theme song holy shit bro Okay, this guy not only wrote, Scott Gale not only wrote the theme song to Saved by the Bell, but Scott Gale also wrote the theme song to Golden Girls, which All right. that theme song, I don't know, is like hilarious in my opinion. Uh, Golden Girls in the Nick of Time, and he also wrote for, it looked like he wrote, he was a music coordinator for a show that I loved, uh, Empty Nest. Uh, Golden Girls, Fresh Prince of Bel Air. He was a, a composer on something there. Blossom. He was the music coordinator for Blossom. Love that show. Soap and a few other things as well. So this guy definitely right. has had quite a career. Sorry. First okay. of all, let's talk. Let's talk about how the the song itself, the guitar riff, <laughs> reminds me of Michael J. Ja- uh, Michael J. Fox and uh, Marty McFly at the end when he's playing. Yeah. When he's playing Johnny Be Good. So it reminds me of like a Johnny Be Good like type of thing. Yes, it's freaking. This thing hits you hard. They they throwing out all these pictures. Oh, oh it's like a great. seizure inducing opening. Yeah, and it's only about yeah. a minute, which is crazy. Yeah, 
And he's it's like, if my teacher pops a test, I know I'm, I'm in a mess. And my dog ain't in my homework last night. night. <laughs> Like what? Riding low in my chair, she don't know when I'm there. If I get anything tomorrow, it will be alright. It's never alright. It's alright all right. because I'm saved by the bell. Do you remember the bell? I mean, when I when I remember going to school, like going to like school and having like a bell ring, that was so interesting. There's a guitar riff that. right now. It's alright because I'm saved by the bell. Cause yeah. I'll say my bell. Yeah, the bell was scary, dude. They had that five minute bell. You only got five minutes. Yeah, I hate dude, that. The bell was crazy. Couldn't but even you know, really hang out. If I knew <laughs> if I knew now what I knew then, like if I can go back in time, I would just be like, the, oh, like the Marty, bell, like, we have McFly? to get there. Yeah, like we have to go to class. It's like, what? Don't worry no, we about don't. it. It's okay. Like it's gonna be fine. I remember running to places. <laughs> <laughs> I remember like running for the bell because it's like, no, it's just like, no. What are you talking about? Don't yeah, worry where, about it. It's like, where are you going? <laughs> <laughs> We're going to get yanked off of YouTube for this. <laughs> what? It's just the bell. All right, so I'm saying, oh, Dan, this God. thing passes. Oh, I mean, it, this it, thing passes. It's too pass. much fun. I mean, we can't it's live so it much well. fun. It goes on so quickly. It's great. Show Introducing everybody that's on it. Mr. Oh. Belding, I mean, you're dude, the best. All of the memories from this, like that. I mean, Mark Paul Gosler, I mean, he was just so funny. I wanted to be Zach. At some point in my life, I literally didn't want my name to be Daniel. I wanted it to be Zach. I was like, I hate my name. Why can't it be Zach? <laughs> Dude, Zach was awesome, man. He was a dick, though. He was yeah. actually not a nice guy. Yeah, he was there's like, like a, a there's a YouTube video of like uh, how Zach Morris is actually a, an asshole. Like oh, yeah. he's like and it shows like all the different things because like he treated Screech like shit. Oh, my um, God. and like all the different things that he did. You oh know? God! The only, there was only one episode that he seemed like he cared about anything. It was oh. when he was, like, found out that he was a Native American. What? Like, I don't remember that. Run, Zach. Zach, run. Yeah. Oh, yeah. God. That's Running Zach. Right. Running Zach was his oh, name. That's racist. <laughs> There's something wrong. There's something wrong with that. It's cool. Dude, you got you to gotta watch that episode. Dude, that was... what, I mean, also, to me, my favorite episodes were all the, the summer episodes when they were all working um, at that place on the beach. Yeah, well, uh, what's her name? Who was the ex-Scientologist? Oh, who was Leah Remini. Just Yeah. Yeah. She was the boss or the manager or something like that. Yeah. Didn't she then come to the school or was there another girl that came with a leather jacket? Because I felt like there was. No, she jacket. came, I think. Yeah. And then she wasn't on for that long, I think, or something like that. No. Yeah. I love the that. summer one was good. The summer one was so good. Yeah. Yeah. Or that. And when Jesse Spano was like, I'm so excited. As... I'm so excited. I'm so scared. I'm... <laughs> she was on speed. Yeah, She's yeah. taking like diet pills. Did you watch the college years? I did. Yeah, I don't remember. They were terrible. Yeah, yeah. That's what did I... this show did not last that long? Did you watch oh. the middle school years when it was oh, uh, uh, Miss Bliss? Yeah, Miss when Bliss. Was... I I remember watching uh, the Miss Bliss uh, stuff afterwards. I think like I th- and I don't think I watched it right away. I think it was like when when Saved by the Bell was like in syndication. Um, they would they would play, you know, M- Good Morning Miss Bliss or whatever, High Miss yeah. Bliss or whatever it was called. Um, and then I would watch. It was that. in the same fucking high school. Yeah, and they had all these different characters except for I think him, I believe. No, it was only off for of four seasons. It actually did not reach a hundred episodes. It was only off for of eighty six episodes. Very Do you hard. remember the episode when uh, Screech lost his lizard? No, but uh, I do. That sounds like an amazing episode. It was a good one. It was one yeah. of his best friends. He, lost, he died. They stung to him. Jesse Spano did a whole thing. Oh my god, dude! Why did he do that on shows when like some kid has like a weird pet like that or something, and then they have to do like they sung like "Oh Danny Boy." Shut up. The pipes, the they pipes are that. calling. Oh yes, they did. 
<laughs> See, I want to do another honorable mention, which we have to do another one of these episodes because now I'm thinking like Fresh Prince, A Different World. To me, A Different World was like one of my favorite. After Dude, we got Bell, went to college. We got another list, band. Dan. We got another list. I Dude. abandoned it and I went to Different World. A Different World was great. <clears throat> All right. Okay, Next okay. one. Okay, now we're in the shits, I think. At this, point. this is fucking... The, this should have been an honorable mention because it's terrible. I put it on there because okay, you got to go to the second link that's on you. Okay, I, I put it on here for because you and I talk about this. You were the only other person I knew that watched this show. Um, Why did we watch this show? This show was ridiculous. I don't. Know. First of all, guys, what we're, we're talking, talking about. about Hold on, don't say the word. There was a character named L Train. <laughs> <laughs> this show is called City Guys. What is this show, Dan? Is okay. this show supposed to be Saved by the Bell, but in the city? Dude, I, I won. Yes. So it was supposed to be like that. But I, I'm going to say something that's going to blow your mind. This show was on for 105 episodes. It was on How? longer than Saved by the Bell. How? Okay, Dan. I, I was don't it know. because it was in the city? These I guys were these a, guys in the wait. Were these so, guys high school kids or college kids? So this was a high school. They were like city guys. An American sitcom television series that aired for five seasons on NBC from September 6, nineteen ninety seven, to December fifteenth, two thousand one. The series aired as part of the network Saturday morning block TNBC, and I think that's why. I think like. You know, it was in that weird space, probably, where you had uh, an ability to, like, get kids stuck watching shows, and then they just throw this shit in there, and no one changes the channel, and then, you know, whatever's on next. Now, the theme song for City Guys was written by Joey Schwartz, Eric uh, Swerdloff, and Michael Muda Ali Muhammad, and composed by Joey Schwartz, who also composed the incidental music used to denote scene changes and breaks in the program. The rap and R&B infused theme included, of course, C-I-T-Y, you can see why, these guys, the neat guys, smart and streetwise, which repeating twice consecutively during the beginning, middle, and near the end of the song. So... Dude, city guys. First of all, I did not realize that the main thing is just these two guys. Like city guys are just these two guys. Yet there was L Train. There was a couple of other characters in this show. Oh, there were a but lot of characters. Are they are they supposed to be like? First of all, both of these guys are walking around the city in Manhattan <laughs> in the nineties like it's no big deal. Were they supposed to be in a private school, the or the public school? I don't know, right? But they're walking around not caring they're having lunch they're jumping over turnstiles like what is this show so they're they're attending manhattan high school which was nicknamed in the series as manny high and avoid trouble while it was not called manny high it was called manny high Uh... (laughs) shut the fuck up oh my god God. it was called manny high Whoa! <laughs> oh what my is god! This show. So maybe so so you had the one kid. I mean, they used stereo stereotypes were just so terrifyingly used in this, like to develop this show. I mean, you had Chris coming from a wealthy family, Jamal yeah. coming from a working class family. I mean, you're you're you you're basically. Oh, so they made the white kid come from a wealthy family. That's right, Jamal. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, mm. I mean, d- thank you for that. And uh, keep them in line. Jamal and Chris's similar personalities ca- caused friction between them in the beginning, but they became best friends as the series went on. The boys and their friends, overachiever Darn Tartikoff, who is played L-train. by Caitlin Ma- Mowry, slick guy Al Ramos, played by Dion Basco, aspiring actress Cassidy Giuliani by Marissa Dillon, De- De- uh, Dean. And dim-witted bully turned friend who was held back six grades, Lionel L. Train Johnson, played by Stephen Daniel. Oh, so the bully <laughs> was held back six six times? Yes, six so times. Was, so he was just an older gentleman. 
Y- yes, he was just an old. <laughs> totally. Oh God, bro! I mean, like this show is bad. So we're not even talking about the show. I don't even want to get into the show. Okay. okay. Dan, because I can't help it, but we should do an episode on the show just because how bad the show is. Yeah, we I have, already know what we're going to test it, but we're going to have to do a episode guys, about. This I want to know this, guys. Seriously, if you're listening to this <laughs> and you never comment, this is the one time I need you to fucking comment. Yeah, start commenting, guys. Do you know City Guys? Have you ever watched City Guys? Do you like City Guys? Yeah. Do you even know what City Guys is? Let us know. I feel like me and you were the only ones ever. I just this can't show. believe this was on longer than Saved by the Bell. This is why I, people must have watched it. This is like this is like when Killer Clowns from Outer Space got a higher rating on Rotten Tomatoes and Cocktail. Yeah. Surprised. Anyways, let's talk about Ooh. the song. Okay, uh, it's not good. It's not good. <laughs> it's not. It's not good. Get it no, out of here. It's it, out get of here. it out of here. This cannot pass. It doesn't even like. It's not even nostalgic. It's just a joke of bullshit. I mean, come on. Now, uh, and we'll finally, we are last- here. Are the last one now. I have to say, I am <laughs> thoroughly enjoying this one. Oh my god! Dude. For many reasons, there's so many layers. This show. Of has this been, show. This has been in my brain for days. Now. Oh, here we okay. go. Here we go. We are talking about California dreams. Dudes with attitudes, kind of groovy, laid back mood. <laughs> wow. Good vibrations. <laughs> dude, they wrote and played this song. Oh, dude. So, like, my question is, is did they find musicians? And then made them act, or did they find actors well, who could be musicians? Okay, so I think it's actors that could be musicians because or are they just theater majors that ended up yeah. getting a show? I don't know because like the the one person that's on this show, Kelly Packer. Sly? Oh. Well, she was you know from Baywatch as well and all these other things. So she's had a larger career at it after California Dreams. Yes, but the fact that she plays an instrument and sings like it was so baffling to me that they all played these songs. I didn't think they did, and then you show you gave me the link to the Jimmy Fallon <laughs> Which reunion. Is crazy. They play it. Yeah, they played it. The only We're person put that, that didn't put in the show notes. They, the only person that didn't play it was Sly. He was their like you know dumb witted friend. Like they always needed their like that like the guy. Yeah, that yeah. did stupid shit. They, he was the manager. Yes. But the thing about them is that this... This reminded me, this was like a spin-off on Zack Attack. What the fuck is that? Oh, that's right. Zack Attack, the band. They had a, it was a band. They had a band. Casey Kasem was oh, there. That's and right. Zack led it to his head and saved by the bell. And I was oh. like, did they spin off? They were like, oh, teenagers have a band and they're still going to school. Let's make a fucking show about this. So we have to look up California Dreams just as a show for a second. Because, like, I've been, like, dealing with this for the last, like, week. Because, like, first of all, the the show had, okay, so many different types of casts as well. Because people came and left several times. You know, there's, like, a whole, there are a ton of people that were in this show um, that left. But this show had five seasons, less episodes than Saved by the Bell, only 78 episodes. So it wasn't that good. No, it wasn't good. I mean, come on. The you know, California Dreams is an American teen sitcom television series that aired on NBC from September 12, 1992 to December 14, 1996 as part of the network Saturday morning block TNBC. So maybe this probably aired with City Guys at the same time. Oh, yes. Can you imagine? Like, how did City Guys get 105 episodes and California Dreams only got 78? Dude. There it is. Created by writers Brett Dewey and Ronald B. Solomon and executive producer by Peter Engel, all known for their work on Saved by the Bell, the series centers on the... There you go. The of series centers on the friendships of a group of teenagers, you know, doing... Who work. live on the beach and they're fucking musicians and they always, like, got gigs. Dude, I, I can't even... Zach Attack. 
begin to imagine because the show oh my god the show just kept getting crazier and crazier guest stars throughout the series notable guest stars include eddie maka i don't know who that is richard t jones fergie fergie was a guest are you serious nikki cox guest starred on that show and tara reed guest starred on california dreams wow (laughs) but this is the problem with this song and and it's not like a problem problem but for the last week i've just been walking around going surf dudes with attitudes like and it's just in my head I like, 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 i can't get it out of my head it's like the monster mash you know all over again it's so weird and it's not great but i don't know like if it, <laughs> is it better than the city kind song no it's definitely i would say it definitely passes the nostalgia not that not the test but it actually is nostalgia. okay because i was gonna say wait manny you're gonna no. say that perfect no no because no because i don't particularly remember most of it until you told me about it uh, and then i was like oh yeah surf deals when i didn't do kind of but, but i wouldn't have remembered that unless i pressed play like I want to talk to people from the show. Like Michael Cade, if you're out there, I, you know, get in touch with us. <laughs> the nostalgia test uh, at gmail.com, right? Is that our? I don't know what our email is. What? what... <laughs> it's in the drop. Is it? It's in the final. I think drop. the website's like the in the drop, drop, so that's okay. Yeah, but, on the website. You'll find it. Nostalgiatestpodcast.com. Yeah. The nostalgiatest.com. Right. Yeah. The nostalgiatest.com. <laughs> we don't know our website address. <laughs> No, I thought it was the nostalgia text test podcast.com. No, it's not. No, it's the ah yes, you're right. Yeah. But people, did you watch the show? Yeah. Yeah. It was exactly like Save by the Bell. It was a cheaper version of Save by the Bell. It wasn't as popular because I don't no, remember liking I don't remember liking any of the characters enough that I remember anything that they did. And I don't remember any shows. Like yeah. I remember I watched it. But it was kind of like a in the background type of show, and I remember that it was okay. But again, it was not. It wasn't Saved by the Bell, dude. Saved by the Bell was yeah. something else. I wonder if this came on after wrestling in the morning. You know how, like on Saturdays, wrestling came on at noon? fucking Saturday, fucking wrestling. Yeah. Holy so I'm shit. wondering if this came on after wrestling, the mm-hmm. hour of wrestling, and then like if we were still like being sacks of shit and just watching TV until like four in the clock in the afternoon. Probably. I remember it being okay. Yeah. Nothing great. But City Guys, I think, was okay and nothing great also. But I think the funny. only reason why me and you like it so much is that there was one night we were all hanging out <laughs> and somehow we were like, so L train came up or something. We were taking a quiz of some sort and you were like, L train, you know, L train, like yo city guys were like city guys, city guys. Dude, we had no life, <laughs> but I don't know if we even, I don't know if I was watching it at that age. I was just like, remember I, it was on, but like, yeah. why did we like that show? I think it was just so stupidly funny because it's like, how is this happening? Like the, the show that we was so did dumb. In that show was ridiculous. I mean, the show was so dumb. I mean, most kids shows are dumb, but that was like dumb. That I was like a yeah. D minus show. But the thing is, this I feel like that show was funnier than California Dreams. Dude, California Dreams only talked about like gigs. They were always doing a gig, and they always ended up just going to that one place that was like their fucking Sharky's. Max. It's called Sharkies. Sharkies, I think, right? There is yeah. there's Sharkies here in California. Oh, that's great. Fucking uh, surf dudes with attitudes. Kind of groovy. groovy. Go fuck dude. your suit. <laughs> skies above. What is the skies above and something above? The vibrations. Marky Mark. <laughs> so I... Uh, Fuck. I am I am I am that a song. little no, you're not a little what? Don't even say that it passes the test. No, I'm not I it look, doesn't even come close. 
It doesn't pass the test. Obviously, it doesn't pass the test. But is is it as bad as the City Guy song? No. So I'm I would I'm gonna say that I think it's nostalgic. I said that. Oh, okay. I said I, it was nostalgic, but like it doesn't fucking it's not no City Guys is terrible. This is quite the scorecard, Manny, because we started off with Perfect Strangers, and you said it's a horrible song. Horrible. And yet, California Dreams is nostalgic. Yeah, but that's a different style of, of show. Different stuff. <laughs> it was an on at the same time. Sometimes like, the world looks perfect. Like, don't forget, like, <laughs> all the beginning part of this episode was kind of just like an episode of Too Many Cooks. Like, yeah. All of them had the same font. It was that yellow. <laughs> it was and all it, yellow. Like, and it, it had the same thing. You're then right, we, then we went into the teenager stuff, mm-hmm. which was like different. Each one had like a different thing on it. Although, you know, obviously it's like, oh, Tiffany ain't received them. Blah, 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 blah. Like you put that in. But <clears throat> each one had their own style. Yeah. Like City Guys is not like the intro to fucking... City uh, guys looks you like you know, Saved by the Bell looks like Rocco's Modern Life t shirt. Holy shit, it live! Does. Yeah, it totally does. <laughs> Holy, that's yeah. hilarious. That so... might be the pull quote for this whole fucking episode. <laughs> but City Guys looks like you. I made it on my next tell. <laughs> next tell. <laughs> I wish we could get our hands on the next tell and put that to the nostalgia test. <laughs> the next tell just playing snake the whole time. Dude, they're, they're like on the phone. Yeah. They're going to all the different fucking Twin Towers is on this thing. Yeah, when did they go to school? They, they Dude, they, I feel they like didn't it, go to school. No, they never went to school. It was all about cheating, I feel like. Was Mr. Cooper in this? Uh, no, Mr. Cooper was not in City Guys. You sure about that? Oh, man. My ass. If, I, if he is in this show, we're going to have, I, I'm going to lose my mind. People, we need to know what you think about this. I want to know if you, if any, I would, you're right, Manny. I want to know if anyone out there has seen City Guys. Hit us up City on Instagram, guys. Twitter, you know, drop a comment when we start like, you know, posting about this. And, and you know what? Actually, drop some comments in these episodes. We know you like them. People telling us we like your episodes. But let everyone else know. Post a comment. Share our episode on your, on your social media. We're trying to start a nostalgia test podcast revolution here, people. Be part of the street team. Let's do it. Guys, you know Dan's going to talk about this every time. Yes, his join job. the mailing list. Okay, this guy does a really good job. Follow editing, us on Instagram. Getting these episodes ready for you. Yeah. He's asking you, share, like, share, subscribe. Yes. Comment. comment. Like, share, subscribe, comment. Do the only way the these thing. things get spread out is more, yeah. more comments. Yeah. So suggest a test. Let us know how you like Suggest a them. test. Tell us what tests you like. Do you like yeah. the movies? Do you like the comedy reviews? Do you oh, like yeah. do you like the song reviews? Do you like the video reviews? What test do you like the most? So Let actually this, you know, we're coming up on like oh this might be when we release this, depending on when when we release this, it might be the twentieth or uh, over twenty episodes, so we're 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 rolling along there, people. So let us know. Exhausted. You like guests? Let us know. <laughs> rolling along, guys. By the way, it's almost two a.m. Just oh, want to let you yeah. know well, in New York. Oh well, we gotta let guess. Manny go. I gotta go to work. Oh, All right. Go, listen, go to work, Manny. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages. Nostalgia test done. Thank you. Thank you again help. for hanging out. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It's a out. rare condition this day and age <laughs> to read any good news on a newspaper bike. Thanks for listening to today's episode. Please subscribe to the Nostalgia Test podcast to know when new episodes drop. Don't forget to leave us five stars and a positive review so more people can find the podcast. Share your thoughts and memories on today's topic on our Twitter at Nostalgia Test and on Instagram at The Nostalgia Test. Tune in next time because you never know what pop culture will pop up on The Nostalgia Test. <laughs>